Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so excited, so, so excited because of the joy the Holy Ghost has given us to share fellowship on these platforms of the Glad Devotion on a daily basis. On this note, I, I welcome you in the name of our dear Lord Jesus, our Heavenly Father, and our Daddy Holy Spirit to today's special episode of our favorite Glad Devotion. On this note, I pray for all of you. I cause grace and peace to be multiplied unto us according to the dimension of insight revelation we receive in truth, life and spirit that comes to us in the name of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Are you excited we are starting a new week? Yes, and that means that another important series in the teaching of God's truth. This week we are going to be looking at uh, the value of the humankind and um, God's plan for mankind and how we as sons of God fit into the accomplishment of that great plan on the earth. So it's going to be a little bit of the overview of uh, mankind, what at all is the reason for mankind on the earth, and how are you related, what is expected of you, in the unfolding of this great plan. You know, so that's what we're going to be looking at, the subject of the value of mankind, God's plan, and the role of the sons of God in this whole thing. And today we are going to start off with a topic, the big and ultimate picture. The big and ultimate picture. Oh my God, I want you to pray for yourself right now that the light of the Holy Ghost will shine in your hearts to capture the reality of what God has for us this week. Pray right now. Father, I release the Holy Ghost as a streaming forth of light and understanding that cometh from above into the heart of people and causes them to grasp reality. Hallelujah. You know, what is man? What is the purpose of man? Has been the age-long question that has brought philosophies and mythologies of various groups of people in different parts of the world. And in fact, the profuse birth of different kinds and types of religions is as a result of the quest to answer that question, what is man and what is his purpose? This is to let you know that this innate desire to understand the human species 
and their purpose on the earth is necessary for every person that comes on the earth. In fact, it is the reason behind most of the evolutionary theories of life. And so it is a question that you as a person must understand. Now let me tell you, there is no desire that a human being can conceive on this earth. That is not possible. So the desire to know the meaning of man's life and find out where he originates was there because the answer is available. And thank God that the maker of heavens and the earth and all of life has not left us without truthful answers. Though the enemy of the human species has also tried in various ways to deceive many with what looks like answers but are not answers. I love one thing about the way man was made. When your heart lays hold on truth, you know, there is never a doubt. So we're looking at the big and ultimate picture of God. And there are certain nuggets I would like us to take home today. Number one is that man is special amongst all the creation of God on the earth. Man is special. In fact, if you as an individual do not appreciate the value of the human species, you will, one, misuse your life, and you will abuse the lives of others. Reason why there are arm robbers, wicked people, and people that treat other humans as sub-beings is because they, they have not understood the value of man. And irrespective of how nice you are today, if you don't understand the value of a man, if they put you in power, you do terrible things. Only people who value and understand the value of the human species can do well when they have control over people. So a husband having a control over a home, if he doesn't know the value of people, will more handle the wife, more handle the children. If someone becomes the owner of a company and doesn't know the value of people, will mishandle all his employees. If someone who doesn't know the value of people becomes a leader in the society, he or she will mishandle the people. So it's very important that you understand the value of the human species. That is what will make you handle people and relate with people the way you ought to. Did you know that when people get uh, insane, or when people get a little uh, out of the normal class, let's say people are born with deformities or certain derangements, there are other people on the earth who see them as subnormal or subhuman. And they, they, they can see an insane person and nothing moves them about their state. They can see a person who's born with a certain deformity and nothing moves them. To them, it's as if this is one of the additions of creation. And in fact, there are people who have gone into studies of things that actually classify men as higher animals. To such people, the death of a human is just like the death of another animal. That's why certain experiments or some discoveries have been so wicked to the human species. Because in their understanding, humans are just higher animals. And so they can experiment with human bodies as they do with animals. So this understanding of the value of man is very important to make you a good husband, a good wife, a good parent. It's very important to make you a good head of an institution. Very important to make you a good leader in a nation or a place in life. And make no mistakes about it. Any human being that you ever conceive to be less human, no matter the circumstance, you will account for it. Because that which God has placed value on, you have devalued. That is why in your heart, you should never come to a place where you dare to think of someone as less valuable. No matter their place of location, their economic status, their educational status, 
Every human being has the same value before the almighty God. Oh, I feel it as I'm talking right now. So number one point, man is special in God's creation. Man is not equal to the sun. He's not equal to the moon. He's not equal to elephant. He's not equal to dinosaurs. He's not equal to mosquitoes. God has given man the power and man can discover things and experiment with every other thing, but man cannot experiment with another man and go scot free. Because man is special. Maybe I should read it to you quickly. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, where everything began. I hear the Lord say, let the world hear, for this is truth. Genesis 1, 26. Remember, the story tells us of the reorganization of things from day one. And after he arrived on day six, he said, then God said, then, you see, what is then? After he had finished every other thing needed for life on the earth, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, then God blessed them, and, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This was after God made everything, the sun, the moon, the stars, the animals, the fishes, everything. Now, he makes man as the top class of his creation and puts him as the controller of the ecosystem on the earth. So you see a baby born today, make no mistakes, that baby is God's ruler over the ecosystem of the earth. You may see somebody in a less privileged state, according to human definition, make no mistakes about that person. He is a potential God's ruler over the ecosystem of the earth. That's number one. Man is God's special creation among all that he created. That is why he put him above all. And that's why he waited until he had created everything needed for life before he brought his dream being. Number two, irrespective of the circumstances surrounding a person's birth, no human on the earth is an accident. No human on the earth is is an accident. Sometimes people don't plan to bring babies. Some babies are born as a result of rape. That's not correct in society, but the person got pregnant. Some even husbands and wives in legal homes did not plan for certain children, but they came. To man, they may be unplanned for, but to God, none of such children is an accident or a mistake. No human being lands on this earth without the processes engaged by God. So someone may be born in a, in, a, in a humanly less privileged state. Make no mistakes about him. You know, there are certain times that people get so enlightened, so affluent, so influential, that they go to typical villages and certain places and they see levels of people and in their minds, they don't consider those people to be a part of a, a, a human life. In fact, there are certain developed nations that see certain nations in certain parts of the world like Africa as though they are not humans. But I told you, every one of such perspectives will be severely judged. Make no mistakes. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, the Lord was speaking to Jeremiah, and this was not only to Jeremiah, this was a typical example. If he never told Jeremiah that way, nobody would have known. He would have thought everything is just the same for everyone, but it's the same for everyone in terms of this purpose. He says that, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly. So remember, 
That child, the father and mother may not have planned, but God formed that baby in the belly. In other words, it is not in the power of the man and the woman to form a baby. That is why it's not every man and woman coming together that produces a baby. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So for every human you see today, not only was God aware of their formation, not only did he supervise it, but the moment life starts as a conceptus and the spirit is released, there is a purpose ordained. Oh, what a painful thing to know in life that billions of people have died without discovering that purpose. I pray for you that it shall not be you. You will not be one that just goes through life as a normal cycle of going to school, going to work, marrying, also the producing, building a house, traveling somewhere and there, and also just die as one of the people. No, you were born for a purpose. Life will never find meaning until you have discovered that purpose and lived for it. <laughs> if I look at the time, I realize that we have to break this thing down into two parts. So we better call this one the big and ultimate picture, part one. And so the first take home point is that man is a special species in God's creation. And the second point is that irrespective of the circumstances that surround anyone's birth, Every human is important. None is an accident. Number three is that there is a clear-cut ultimate plan for the human species. This is where the meat of this discussion is. There is the ultimate plan for the human species upon the earth. Creation is not an accident. The creation of man is not an accident. And the one who generated all these is not aimless. He had a clear plan a clear ultimate goal for the existence and function of the human species. And I'm glad that I can show you this clearly in the scriptures, which is God's word to the whole world, if you will pay attention. What is the ultimate goal of the almighty God for the human species? I'm going to go on a short bit when I return. We'll take a look at that. I'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Right, so from the scriptures, what is the ultimate goal? I've taught profusely on this, on Revival Breeze. And so, we still keep teaching these things until many people catch it in the world, and especially in the body of Christ. If you study the scriptures and you are privileged to have the overall perspective of God concerning life on the earth, then you can milk out what I'm sharing with you. I have had the uncommon privilege of God walking me through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation in 20 days in a period of fasting over which he showed me the overarching plan of divinity for man and his plan on the earth. And this has been the secret to insight into the scriptures because every scripture falls in place. This is the plan. God's ultimate plan for the human species is for the human species to be developed into beings that will constitute 
a dwelling place for him for eternity. God's ultimate plan for the human species is for them to be developed into beings that will constitute a dwelling place for him in eternity. Since God started creation, since transcendence condescended into existence, God has never fully settled in any of the things he created. But it has been the desire of God to have a, a permanent place of abode where apart from being transcended, he can fully be located in, for lack of a better word, a, a structure created by himself. He named it Zion. And this is where he chose to dwell. He, he chose it for his habitation. And it is a place he decided that there he will rest. I will explain that to you one day. It means when that structure is constituted and God takes his abode there, the things he has made will be the thing that will begin to control all he has created. He does not need himself to come into operation anymore. Maybe I should show you this briefly before we go off. Oh, Rashande Rekoshatalamande. Let me show you this in the book of Psalms. Psalm 132, pay very close attention. It says that, For the Lord hath chosen Zion. Now, Zion, because of its eternal meaning, has various meanings today. You know, Zion refers to a fiscal place in Palestine, the city of David. Zion refers to the heavenly Jerusalem. Okay? The dwelling place of God's people, but I'm not into that. I'm telling you the, the ultimate Zion. For he had chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is God. It says, for the Lord had chosen Zion. That's what he has selected. He has desired it, my God. God desired Zion for a dwelling place. Look at verse 14. He says, this is my rest. I will explain this rest to you one day. This is my rest forever. That structure, that dwelling place that God ordained will be constructed from the human race is Zion. He says, there he will rest forever. He says, here will I dwell for I have desired it. This is the ultimate goal for the human species. To be transformed into beings that will constitute this dwelling place for God. Yeah, before I round off, let me show you this scripture. This is the reason for this scripture. Let's go. I'll explain. I'll pick it up in our next episode because we generally have to break this into two parts now. Romans 8, if you read verse, the 29 verse, look at what he predestined man for. He says, let me take from verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. So the human race has been called according to the purpose of God. Okay? Now go to verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. So he knew the human race before time. I'll show you this in our next episode. He, for whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he chose the human race and predestined the race to be jointly formed. The word conform there is not to shape. There are two meanings of conform. There's one that means to shape. There's another that's sum of four, to form together. So the human race has been chosen to be formed together with the word of God. To constitute a dwelling place. That is why if you go to Colossians 2.9, quickly, look at what he says about the sun now. This is the ultimate. Verse 9, it says, for in him, that's talking about Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ. And this Christ is formed by the transformation of the human race into a, a state of being that constitutes the body of Christ. It is the place for the dwelling of God. It is the Zion that has been chosen for God as his place of rest forever. 
Are you catching this? Maybe I should round up here because my time is up. But we will surely pick it up in our next episode. The point is we are looking at what is the big picture for mankind? What is the ultimate goal of God for mankind? Number one, man is the most important species in all of God's creation. Number two, no human is an accident on the earth, irrespective of the circumstances surrounding their birth. Number three, this race called humans, God has an ultimate goal. It is for, that, for them to be transformed into beings that will constitute his dwelling place forever. Wonderful viewer, these are amazing things. And what you are hearing, your heart is testifying that there's something in this message for you. If you have been watching us and you have not yet received Jesus, this issue of Jesus is not about religion. It is part of the developmental plan of God for you, that you'll be born a human, but you must be transformed into a son of God through the word that has become Jesus today because he had to come and die for mankind. You must become a son of God. You must be born again. If you want to become a son of God, it's easy. Believe Jesus died and rose again and declare him as Lord by saying this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit and I declare that I am born again. Hallelujah. If I've done this with all your heart, truly you are born again. Surely, if you just start this, I'll come your way again in our next episode as we take a look at the part two of the big picture and the ultimate growth for mankind. Till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today, and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai, Pasa, Inquanta, Takrade, Kaswa, Lagon, Tachiman, Tema New Town, Ashama New Town, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa. Collegono Tree Speaking, Collegono Gas Speaking, Collegono English Speaking, the Multinational Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 055-792-7744 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.